Hello everyone, it's Velvet Bunny and in this video we are going to be sewing this t-shirt and adding some custom graphics to it. So the materials you are going to need are your pattern and I have a tutorial on how I made this t-shirt pattern on my channel so do check that out. I will leave the link in the description below. Jersey knit fabric, this is a good way to use all those old t-shirts you no longer wear or just go and thrift one. A pen or chalk fabric scissors and yes I have one just for paper and one just for the fabrics pins a sewing machine needle and thread and lastly your doll just to try it on to see how it fits for the graphics pad and this is optional if you really want to do graphics on a t-shirt um, there's two that I use which is the heat transfer paper or the fabric paint and I will show you how I use both So the first thing you're going to do is take your fabric and examine which way the stretchy part goes because you want that to go across your doll's body. When you figure that out, fold the fabric in half and place the pattern piece on the fold. Then you want to trace around that, remove the pattern, pin through both layers and cut that out. Do that for the front and back pattern pieces only. For the sleeves, you want two separate pieces, so just lay two pieces together and again trace around that pin, then cut that out, making sure to cut through both layers. I'm just folding both sleeves in half here and cutting a tiny notch to mark the center point. Now that all the pieces are cut out, it's time to put them together. Take the front and back pieces and lay them right sides together. Pin the shoulders in place and sew using a zigzag stitch. Remove the pins as you go. I'm using a black thread so you can see what I'm doing but you will want to use a thread that matches the fabric you are using. Next, it's time to hem the neckline. Fold over the neckline about a quarter of an inch and pin in place. Then grab a needle and thread and we are going to base stitch this down so that it will be easier to run under the sewing machine. Now moving on to the sleeves. Take one of your sleeves, find the center point, I did that earlier by making this tiny notch, lay it right sides together, 
Pin at the center and at both sides, then continue pinning the rest of the sleeve. Awesome, now that both sleeves are attached, fold over the ends and hem. I'm using one quarter of an inch as my hem allowance here. Next, fold the t-shirt over, line up the seams, and pin all the way from the bottom of the shirt to the end of the sleeves. Do that for both sides. Now sew that up and all that's left to do is to hem the bottom of the t-shirt with a half inch hem allowance and your t-shirt is complete. Before I move on to the custom graphics part, I always try on my finished pieces on the door to see how it fits. In my case, my t-shirt was 3 quarters of an inch too short and it wouldn't hurt to drop the armhole about 1 eighth of an inch. I did the same steps like I did in my pattern making video but this time I measured 3 quarters of an inch from the edge of the page and trace around that pattern. I did my adjustments to the armhole and made sure my hip circumference was the same as the previous pattern. When all that was completed, I cut out my pieces again from the leftover fabric and sew. Then when I was finished, I tried it on Samuel once again and this time I don't think I need to make any more adjustments. Now it's time for the custom graphics. You can use fabric paints like what I have here and you can find fabric paints in any store that sells fabric. For the designs, you can either freehand a design on your shirt or you can make a stencils like what I did for this one. Or you can buy a ready-made stencils from the craft store like this one here. When using a stencil, make sure it lays flat on the shirt and use a dabbing motion when applying the fabric paint. Then let that dry completely and heat set it, I believe is the term, it's when you apply heat to the design to permanently fuse it to the fabric. And it's complete! So lastly, and this one I use the most because I have a lot more freedom with my designs, are the heat iron-on transfer paper. 
These are my examples of what I did with them, but to use the heat transfer paper, you will need a computer that has something like Photoshop and an inkjet printer. But remember, there are two types of iron transfer paper, one for light fabrics and one for dark. Normally when you buy heat transfer paper, it will come with instructions on how you should use them. For the light transfer paper, you would have to make sure that all the images are inverted when printing because you would have to lay the images right side down and don't do a back and forth motion with your iron. Press and leave it for about 10 to 15 seconds. Do the corners first and then the center. You will do the same thing for the dark transfer paper, but print your images normal with a dark border around it. Do not invert your images like the light transfer paper. Peel the backing off like a sticker and place a piece of wax paper or in my case a piece of fabric on top of your image and heat press it into place. And I know there's a lot more ways to get images printed on t-shirt but these are the only two that I use and the cheapest. And that's it guys, that's how you can create a custom t-shirt for your doll. I hope this tutorial was useful and that you can try it out. And if you do, please tag me at VabbitBunnyBJD so I can see what you did. Thank you for watching, until next time, bye!